In this video, I'm going to talk about two more applications to integration. Uh, first one we're going to talk about is average value, and then we'll talk about finding arc length. Um, average value is really pretty simple. Um, if you want to find, if you want to find the average, that says average right there, average value of some function, so y equals f of x, um, from x, if x goes from a to b, uh, what you're going to do is take the, you're going to take 1 over b minus a and integrate from a to b of f of x dx. So normally when we calculate average value, like if you wanted to calculate the average value of your tests, you would add up all of your test scores and then you would divide it by the total number of tests. And so equivalently here, we are adding, remember I keep thinking of integrals as sort of adding things together. So we would add up a total from A to B of whatever the function is and then divide it by um, divide it by that interval um, of x. Okay, so let's do an example with this. Okay, so if we have a cup of coffee, it's 95 degrees Celsius, and the room is 20 degrees Celsius, then according to Newton's law of cooling, the temperature of the coffee after t minutes is going to be the following formula. So we've got that the temperature at t minutes is going to be 20 plus 75e to the negative t over 50. And we want to know what the average temperature of the coffee over the first half hour is. Okay, so average value, we are going to take the integral of 20 plus 75e to the negative t over 50. We're going to integrate this with respect to t. We have to integrate over that half hour. Now notice that t is in minutes in this formula. So the first half hour, half hour would be 30 minutes. And then if we want to find the average value, we want to uh, divide all this by 30 minus 0. Okay, so integrate. Um, let's see, we're going to have 1 over 30 out in front. Then we integrate 20, we get 20t. We integrate e, and we get e to the negative t over 50. But because of that negative t over 50, we've got to divide by negative t over 50, which is the same as multiplying by negative 50. And we still have that 75 out in front. So that's multiplied there. And all of this is multiplied, and we need to evaluate it from 0 to 30. Okay, so I still have my 1 over 30 out in front. Plug in 30, so 20 times 30 plus, um, oh, actually that, we could put the minus sign in there. So we could go minus, we've got 50 times 75, I'll worry about that in a minute, e to the negative 30 over 50. Then we plug in 0, so minus, when I plug in 0 into the first one, I get 0. And then minus, because I'm plugging in 0, but it's a negative quantity from that negative 50, I'll end up getting 50 times 75, and e to the 0 is 1. Okay, um, so let's see, what can we do with all of this? Well, that term with the e is just going to kind of stay, stay by itself. Um, and other than that, on this first term, I can, I can cancel that 30 with that 30. So for the first one, I would be left with 20. Um, I still have that 50 times 75. And 5 times 75 is 375, and add a 0, so minus 3,750 
e to the negative 3 fifths, if I cancel the tenths out of there. And then I still have that 50 times 75. Um, let's see here. What can I do with that? Because I still have, oh, this guy I need to divide by 30. Um, and with, um, and then with this term here, I am going to have, what do we have? I can cancel the tens, so I could do 5 times 75 and divide that by 3. All right, so let's see, 3 goes into 75, that's 25 times, so I'll have 125 there plus 20, so that would be um, 145. And then here, the tens could cancel, and I could take 375 and divide that by 3 and again get 125. So minus 125e to the negative 3 fifths. Um, and so this would be our average value of the temperature of the coffee in the first half hour. Um, and this would be in Celsius. That would be our units. Okay, so average value. Average value is pretty easy. Um, it's just a matter of dividing by a total, dividing by a total, integrating over the total of your function. All right, so now let's take a look at arc length. Okay, now let's talk about arc length. Now, say we have a curve. I don't know, it looks something like that. And we want to find the length of this curve from right here, A, to right there, B. So, like, if you were to drive your car along this curve from A to B, how many miles would you drive? Right, so that's kind of the question, and let's call this curve F of X. Now, I could estimate the miles driven by just taking little segments. So I could estimate from right there to right there with that one, and right there to right there with that one, and there to there with that one, and there to there with that one, and there to there. And so all of these are just different. I, and notice that I haven't, I'm not choosing x to be a certain value. I'm not choosing y to be certain values. I'm just sort of randomly drawing lines in here to estimate going from one place to another along this curve. Now, if we zoom in to one of these, so any one of these we could zoom into. So if I zoom in right there, let's see if I can actually, no, can't get this to do that. Okay, so I'm just going to redraw that little bit of curve. I'm redrawing the little bit of curve and with that, um, that segment in it. So that segment, and that's a line. It should be a straight line right there. All right, now, when I do that, I can then separate that line into some x value and some y value. These are all different for every one of the segments, so maybe I'll, I'll specify it by putting a sub i in both of these, just to say, you know what, I'm just taking one of these segments, but there really are a bunch of them. Now, if we find, if we use Pythagorean theorem, and find the distance or the length of that segment, it would be the square root of delta x sub i, square that, plus... Uh, delta sub y, or delta y sub i, and square that. Now, from this formula, I can factor out a delta x sub i. So if I do that, then I get 1 plus delta y sub i divided by delta x sub i, all of that squared, and all of that times delta x sub i squared. And then what I can do is um, the square root in here, I can, I can take out that, that delta x. So I get 
square root of 1 plus delta y sub i over delta x sub i squared. And then I'm going to take the delta x sub i outside of the square root. All right. Now what I'm going to do is put a... I'm going to make a Riemann sum out of this. So if we did the length of this curve, we would want to add up all of these lengths. We want to add that to that to that to that to that. So I want to add up all of these lengths, delta y sub i over delta x sub i squared, delta x sub i, and I want to start, um, start with i equal to 1, so that's the first length, and I picked n of them. And then this would be way more accurate if we actually took n to be infinite. So if we actually made all of these little segments really, really tiny, um, so n being infinitely many of those n little segments, we would get the exact arc length. So this is a Riemann sum, and we can write that Riemann sum as an integral. So this is going to give us the length of this curve, and the length is going to be then the integral from a to b of the square root of 1 plus, I'm going to rewrite these deltas a little bit differently as dy dx. They're still just changes in y's, changes in x's, which is a derivative. So we would take the derivative of y with respect to x and square it, and then integrate that with respect to x. Um, remember that a function of x is always equal to y. So that's that y that we're talking about right in here. You're going to take a derivative of that function. You're going to square it. You're going to add 1, take a square root of all of that, integrate that, and then plug in a and b. And that would give you the full, the full arc length. If we did this same exact idea, but instead of here, here I took out delta x, but I could factor out delta y right there instead, and we would get a very similar formula, but our formula would be 1 plus the derivative of x with respect to y squared, and then we would have to integrate with respect to y. So you would use either one of these formulas depending on how your function was given. If your function was given as a function of x, then you'd want to use dy dx. If you were given a function in terms of y, or if that one was easier to take a derivative with respect to, then you would use and integrate with respect to y. Okay, let's do And so let's find the length. Let's find the arc length um, of y equals the natural log of secant of x, um, where x goes from 0 to pi over 4. All right, now if I use that formula, I need to find dy dx first. And then I can square it and add 1 and take a square root. So let's just find dy dx first. All right, so the derivative of a natural log is, first of all, 1 over secant. So I'm going to put that over secant. And then we've got to use the chain rule here and take the derivative of the inside part. And the derivative of secant is secant tangent. Okay, so the secants cancel. And so for the derivative, I just end up with tangent. Now in the formula, we want to square it. So I want to square dy dx. So I want to square tangent. Also underneath that root is 1 added. So I'm going to add 1. So if I add 1 to all this, then I get... 
um, 1 plus tangent squared is secant squared. Then we would want to take the square root of all of it. And if I take the square root of something squared, I get secant. Okay, I think I'm ready to integrate. So we are going to integrate from 0 to pi over 4. We're going to integrate the square root of 1 plus dy dx squared, and that ended up being secant. So we are going to integrate secant. Now this integral is one that you need a table for. The integral of secant is natural log of the absolute value of secant of x plus tangent of x. And we need to evaluate this from 0 to pi over 4. Okay, so plug in pi over 4. Secant is 1 over cosine, and the cosine of pi over 4 is root uh, let's see, that's root 2 over 2, and so I would end up with the reciprocal of that, 2 over root 2 for secant. Then the natural log of tangent, sorry, I just said natural log and that's not what I meant. Um, we're finding the tangent of pi over 4, and that's 1. So we get natural log of, the secant is 2 over root 2, tangent is 1. Then we've got to subtract when we plug in 0, so natural log of secant of 0. So cosine of 0 is 1, and 1 over 1 is 1, minus the tangent of 0. Let's see, sine of 0 is 0, so that's going to be 0. And I've got a natural log of 1 which is equal to 0, so that second term will go to 0, and we'll be left with natural log of the absolute value of 2 over root 2 plus 1. So if we were to trace out the curve, natural log of secant x, if we were to trace out that curve from 0 to pi over 4, the length of it would be natural log of, root, or of 2 over root 2 plus 1. All right, I think that's it for this video.